going to show you my adaptation of making this uh, 3D mask with the nose wire right here. And it sits on the face very nicely, fits very comfortably, and it's great if you're wearing glasses because your breath gets caught over here and does not fog your glasses. And uh, it's easy to make, fast, and so far, this is the best style I have made. Let me just run through the things that you might need for this project. Uh, you're going to need material, and you can use uh, two different colors. I like to use a lighter color lining on the inside, but a uh, color for the outside. Uh, so these are the two co uh, materials I'm going to be using and uh, you're going to uh, need uh, to make the pattern and the pattern will be made from uh, printing paper one sheet of printing paper and uh, basically uh, some clips to hold it uh, some markers to mark the, the pattern to cut it out with a nice pair of uh, cutting scissors uh, nose wire which I, I get on Amazon and it comes like a hundred of them in a package and they're like that and what I usually do is I mark the center so I'm able to place it and the way I mark the center is I measured out the length and then I folded this piece of paper in half and I have a permanent marker here and I mark it and there we have the center of the wire so back this goes for the next one and uh, basically that's um, about it you're going to need some uh, elastic and uh, here's another one I've made with uh, the same color lining but the out outer part and here's the nose wire and basically that's how it sits on your face so when you're breathing your breath catches and comes back down as opposed to coming straight up to your face like these older ones that I, I've made that I've liked and they've been comfortable but they've been just straight so whenever I was wearing them often they would uh, fog my glasses because they were uh, my breath would come right up and hit the glasses so uh, here's my notes I usually write down some notes to uh, give me directions of what I'm doing and I've seen this on, on YouTube and several different people's adaptation of it. And this is just mine. And I like to uh, share it with you. So what we're after, what we want to do is make a, a template, a pattern. And this is basically the pattern that we're going to be using. One cut for the outer layer. And this is the sides where the uh, elastic gets sewn. Where the elastic will go and then uh, two pieces for this is folded in half so two two pieces that don't have this flap so this is the way we make the pattern we take a regular printing paper eight and a half by eleven folded in half like this and then fold it in half again like this it doesn't have to be precise it's approximate it all works out so now we have a piece of printing paper that is folded twice once up and then over and then what we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, measurements and so you you need a ruler and the measurement will be, this is two and a half inches. Let's see, where's that? Here we go. Two and a half inches over here, mark it. And then we have four and a half inches over here, mark it. One and a half inches 
up. And then this is the, the uh, sewn or the elastic flap right here. That's one inches. Going to be folded down in half. So that's that. So now we're going to cut it out. Now I want you to use your paper scissors, not your fabric scissors, because cutting paper dulls fabric scissors very fast. And then you can't cut your fabric so nicely. So here we go. Cut it out. Cutting. Okay. And my pattern is made. Here we go. There's my pattern. And this is the elastic part. So basically I've traced it onto a, a piece of cardboard so it would be easier for me to uh, work with and give me a little edge to, to mark my uh, fabric to cut it out. So that's my pattern. Basically, fold in half, measure two and a half, two and a half inches up. There we go. Four and a half inches lengthwise. There we go. One and a half inches. draw a line and then we connect the two and a half and the one and a half like so and then this is my one inch oh dear the width yes it's one inch I was looking at the wrong part so now we have that's your pattern, and this is the cutting line. I'm gonna cut along here, here, and that's what we have right here. What happened? We cut it out, and there's the pattern. Easy peasy. Okay, now let's take our main, main color, outside color. Let me move all this stuff out of the way. So I have some room over here. Okay, now here's my outer color fabric. The grain doesn't really matter that much, so, uh, you know, easy peasy. Well, here's my weight. In case you're wondering, that is a gear from an Austin Healy. The small is the reverse. I think, and the odd or the big one is first gear. So there we go. <laughs> I just happen to know that. Okay, so number one will be to cut the outer part. I want to save as much fabric. I don't want to waste any. Although I usually make use of every little bit. So I'm marking it with, this is a piece of soap. At the very end, when you've used your soap, uh, uh, it, I found that if I mark, uh, to use it to uh, mark my uh, fabrics with, it works really well and it irons right out, soft. And it's not wasted, that last little bit of soap that I just never wanted to waste, didn't know what to do with, I finally found a use for it. And I mark it out like so. There's my cutting line. Now I'm going to cut two more, but without the uh, elastic flap. So it'll be like this. Line it up real nice. So, there we go. 
mark and mark and one more because this is going to be folded in half which goes on the very top and bottom okay there we go weight down mark it with the soap I live close to an airport so private little airport so you can hear airplanes flying by periodically I'm so used to it that uh, I don't notice it so that basically that is the pattern pieces for the outer layer so we've got one piece that has the elastic portion and two pieces that do not now I need to cut one more for the inner lining which will be of this material and that also will not have the uh, flaps of course you can use anything you want to uh, mark it with it will not show so you can even use just a pencil I think on on this particular color it'll show up better with uh, this marking pen this this particular one disappears when you iron it make sure mark it no elastic flap just this is the inside lining of my mask and I'm going to cut them out and here's how I cut it out just with scissors some people are really good with uh, the rotary cutting tools I prefer my scissors it's just easier easy peasy just cut no precision I, mean, I want to stay in the line of things so here we go cut 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 stay within the view of the camera here while I'm at it uh, well, make sure you subscribe I'd love it if you leave a feedback and press the like button that would be nice too it'll just make me want to post more okay so that's uh, the inside lining I'm gonna iron it so it's all nice and straight and uh, I'll be right back with the uh, cutout and the assembly okay, so I've got uh, my three pieces cut out this is the outer front of the mask with the uh, flaps for the uh, oh here's my pattern for the elastic and two pieces of the main material without the flaps okay so now I'm going to oh I forgot to cut that one <laughs> line over here okay let me just cut that there we go much better uh so now i'm going to create the sandwich assemble it all and put in my uh nose wire so what i need to do is fold these two in half And uh, I usually give it a quick little iron. I have my cordless, Panasonic cordless iron, which I just love and adore. So basically like that. So we've got uh, our main uh, piece with right side up. And right side folded and got 
about this folded. I'm going to uh, arrange this very quick. Now I need this nose piece. This is going to be the top of my uh, mask, just like that. And so that wire needs to go right over here. So what I usually do is I just fold this piece in half and with my iron just do a little crease there so I know that's the center and then I fold down there's my center line and I have marked my uh, nose wire I usually can't get this glue. There's glue on it and it has this backing and often I can't get my nails are so short. So I have a little tweezer. There we go. And uh, so now I'm going to line up the center of the nose piece and to the center line going on the bot on on the lower side of it and then I flip it over the nose wire has a little dome to it it's it's I don't know if you could see it it's concave on this side and it's domed and I like to have the domed side out that's just my personal preference I'm not sure that's the proper way but that's what I like. So now my wire, my nose wire is in there and I've got uh, my one inch elastic allowance over here. Everything is uh, facing up and now uh, I have my lining, my inside lining, which is going to be right side down, just like this. And it's going to be sewn, let me get one of my pens. It's going to be sewn right, let's see, along here. So, 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 so. Oh, this pen is not writing so well. Let me see if I can get a pencil that's better. Okay, so, so, so. So, so, so that's what I'm going to be doing is sewing all the way down. Both sides, sew on both sides. So I'm going to secure it with my clips. Centered, centered. And this is my sandwich. So basically I have the uh, outside of the mask with the elastic flaps right here. And then I have two pieces folded in half. One has the nose wire. And then I have the lining. And that's my sandwich. So I have one two, three, and off I go to sew this. Now this can be sewn either on a sewing machine or on by hand. Very easy, not that much to do. The back stitch would be perfect. And uh, then we're going to turn it inside out. Okay, I'm hand sewing this one just to demonstrate how easy it is. And here's a little trick I saw on YouTube and I thought it was kind of brilliant to put two little marks on your nail with a Sharpie. And that way I can line up my seam absolutely perfectly, just like that. And the back stitch. Perfect. It's 
stitch, back stitch, back stitch, which looks like that in the back. But I'm going to be stitching all the way around on both sides, and then we'll turn it inside out. So I, I'll get back here when I finished sewing this. And I have it pinned on this, uh, what they call a ironing hand, but I made this myself. Uh, it's just a, a piece of uh, fabric tube, and I, I filled it with uh, wool, a uh, yarn, so a uh, knitting yarn. I'm a knitter and I have lots and lots of yarn, and that's what I had handy. And it's worked out pretty well. And I anchor the piece that I'm sewing and it works like a third hand. So I can hold it taut and I can sew better. That is if I don't have my thread doing this. I'll undo that off camera. And my uh, thimble, I love this thimble. Uh, my mother left it to me. It's sterling silver, and it's just very sweet to me. And uh, I'll get this knot out. The thread, 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 and knots. That's our enemy. I think I forgot to put wax on this yarn, on this uh, thread. It works better if I do that. Or even the soap that uh, I used for marking. Had I just done this with it which I forgot to do, which makes it slide easier. So now I have to work on this little knot. Well, try as I might, I was not able to get this knot out of here. So I just left it there because this is going to get turned inside out and we'll never see it. It'll be buried inside of here. But, you know, those knots, and, and the thing that I forgot is that to uh, cure this problem is to take your sewing, hand sewing thread and uh, run it. This is beeswax. I've had it for a long time. Don't use it that much, but uh, I have it. I don't know where I got it. And uh, you just simply run your thread right through there and that will uh, condition it and make it slide easier they i also have this stuff uh, it's called uh, thread magic and it's the same kind of a thing i, I like to use this uh, this works well i've been using that or if you have none of those uh this bit of soap uh, will do the trick. Not just to, to mark your uh, uh, material, but it'll make the thread nice and smooth and slidey, and it'll keep it from knotting. So those are a couple of good tips to use when you're hand sewing. Let me get this out of the way. This is uh, a little piece of felt that came with uh, the pad that I have that I use just to do little tiny bits of ironing on, but I use it, put some of my needles in. This is a gauge measuring little, I don't know where I got it, but I found it. And it measures out that quarter of an inch seam allowance. So here we are. So I sew, hand sewed this one, and this is where I switched threads. Hand sewed all the way here and all the way here. So both sides are sewn. That's hand sewed. It's, it's very easily done. It went fairly fast and uh, worked well. <clears throat> a tip is for me, because I'm not that great a sewer, um, and it's hard for me to stay straight. So if I mark uh, the uh, uh, seam allowance, well, let me put this out of the way. That's the ironing ham. Ironing ham is called that because uh, 
I don't know. Oh, I think it's because it was shaped like a ham. It's used for uh, ironing sleeves and things where you can't get your iron, you know, to smooth it out. So, uh, also, I wanted to show when I'm trying to get those knots and things out, and uh, this uh, needle nose tweezer is really handy for sewing things. So those are really handy little tools. Now, I mark uh, this, I have this little ruler, besides its big brother. This is the big brother I use, and then uh, this little one, and it helps me to mark uh, the quarter inch seam allowance that I'm going to have on this thing. Mark it. At, as I say, you know, it's going to be turned inside out, so it doesn't really matter. It won't show. So now I'm going to, oh, be sure to subscribe and uh, like. That would be nice. Thank you. Okay, so this one I sewed with my machine all the way around both sides. And if you notice, I sewed from the beginning, this is just the one, this is going to be for the elastic, but I sewed all the way over here. And you'll see that'll come in handy when we turn for the seam allowance. Now, well, before I turn it inside out, I give it a little trim here. Oh, sometimes the material is not quite even. I don't know why I'm not that precise with things. But as I say, it doesn't really matter. See, like here, it's not even. It should be even, but it's not. I don't know why. So I just trim it. Trim, trim, trim. And then maybe notch it over here a little bit, you know, to help that uh, little curvy part. Not totally necessary, but it can be done. All right, so now I'm going to turn it inside out. So first, I make a little flower like that. Here's the two little, no. And then I keep pulling those two. Pull, pull. This is the hardest part. And as you can see, now I, I'm getting a hold of the nose wire. I feel that nose wire. And I give it a little bend. And that helps me to pull it right out. And there we are. We are turned inside out. And this will be the nose part. This will be for the elastic. And now I give it a nice pressing to press this, this seam right open. I'm going to press, press, press. Let me, let me get my iron over here and do that for you. Show you how I do that. I have my cordless iron here. Okay, so this is what I do. Because I've sewed that little piece right there, it folds very easily. So I, I ironed that little part first, and there, that little seam. Oh, no, let me move this stuff out of the way. I don't want to melt my rulers, and I want to stay in range of the camera. Okay, so, uh, and now I just press this open. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay. like that. Now this side. Into this side. Press. Oh, my doggy just woke up. Good morning, doggy. Yeah. And there we are. All right, I will now. 
fold this halfway like that and over. This is where my elastic is going to be put. Like that. And where my clips, and I clip, and I clip, and then I'll be sewing this down right here. And when I'm done with that, I'll be back at you. I have sewn this little flap down, and now I need to put in the elastic. I have this very thin elastic I've been using, which works out really well. We always replace if it wears out, so I don't sew it in there. 11 inches is what works for me. And I have this handy little clover, uh, I don't know what they call it, elastic threader, but it simply will go, well, it's being blocked. So what I usually do is I come in from the other side and it'll slide right through. And I just simply knot it, but you can, of course, sew it together if you were so inclined and pull it through there to make it invisible. And that is all there is to it. Our mask is finished. It wears really well. It's very comfortable. And uh, let me know how it works out for you. And again, please subscribe and like. Until next time. See so last time. but not least, I uh, forgot to tell you this part, so I'm adding this. This is a, a, another one I've done. We need to sew a little pocket for the nose wire. The, the glue that the nose wire has will wash out. So it's, it's great for placing it, but uh, it won't... Uh, it's not permanent glue. Unless you use a permanent glue, see it's gluey, but uh, not, it's temporary, it's replay. It's removable. So uh, unless you use a permanent glue or sew a little pocket, like I've done on, on this one here, I usually sew the sides first, back and forth, and then down. And it can be done after if you've assembled it, or you can do it uh, before you put the sandwich together. Here's a, a, another one with a uh, different uh, style. And this is silk on the outside and uh, cotton uh, next to the mouth. It feels better and cleans nicer. This one too is silk with cotton inside. And there are some decorative ones, different color ones. And uh, that's what we've got. Uh, we've got uh, to sew down the little pocket for the uh, nose wire. Nose wire goes right here underneath. And what I've done is left a little, so I don't uh, sew it with the machine, or you can do it by hand. And that is all. Stay safe. Wear, wear your mask. See you next time.